Hello everybody and welcome to our first lesson in Pure Data for Digital Music Making. Today we're going to be creating a simple sequencer. To begin, let's test out our audio. We're going to want to create a new object. This is done by pressing Command 1. Inside of our new object here we can click on it and then type in OSC tilde space and let's do a test tone of 440 hertz. Here we go. As you can see, this is our oscillator. Uh, it'll be sending out some signal once we uh, finish up this little test patch. At this point, it'll just be a simple sign tone. Now we're going to create a single multiplier object. Command 1 once again. And then star tilde and then our test tone will have a, an amplitude of 0 0.5. All right, so let's collect our oscillator to the signal multiplier. And then we're going to create a digital to analog converter. So command one for a new object, DAC tilde. All right, and our DAC has two inputs. We're going to connect our signal multiplier both to the left and then to the right outlet. At this point, we don't hear any audio. So let's go up to the media option up here, and we'll see that DSP, or Digital Signal Processing, is turned off. And you'll notice a couple shortcuts. We have Command Period to turn off our DSP, but we want to turn ours on. So let's hear what that sounds like. Great, we have audio. Let's press Command Period to turn that off. All right. So the first thing we're going to want to do to create our simple sequencer is to create a random object. The random object, like so, command one, random, and let's say 12. What random will do is when it receives, say, bang, it will generate a random number between 0 and 11. Okay, let's test that out. Let's create a button. Here you can look in the put menu and it'll say bang. The shortcut for that is also shift command B so we can see that that works as well. And let's connect our button to random and now we're going to create just a, uh, a number box through the use of Command-3. And look at that, that automatically connected for us. But let's just do it without it automatically connecting here. Command-3. And then those are connected. And let's see what happens when we press this button. Command-E to enter the uh, evaluate mode, basically, so that you can press this button now with the cursor. 11, 7, 1, 8. Perfect. We have a random sequence of numbers. Now, for the use of our oscillator and for the purposes of this sequencer, we're going to want to communicate to it through the use of MIDI numbers. So MIDI numbers basically designate pitches as if they were on a keyboard. So middle C on the keyboard is equivalent to the MIDI note number of 60. So in order to do an operation where we're using MIDI numbers and then we're converting them to a frequency that our oscillator understands, we have a simple object that we can create, command one, called M to F. All right, so what M to F will do is convert our MIDI numbers into a frequency for our oscillator to understand. All right. Now, since MIDI note 60 is middle C, we actually don't want to start just at zero with our random numbers. So let's create another object, command one, and we're going to create an addition object. So just plus, and then let's say 60. So now, our random object will randomly choose between 60 up to 71, to create uh, a sequence of MIDI numbers that would essentially be called from a uh, chromatic scale. 
So let's create another box just to test out what that does. There. So now we've got 64, 67, 70, 63. Perfect. And with our MIDI to frequency, we can do a similar thing. And we can see what this, the equivalent of each of these MIDI numbers are in terms of frequency. 440, 293.6, 415.3, 440. Excellent. Okay. So, now we have that going on. Let's connect our oscillator to our output and just see what's happening here if we press our random button. Oh, okay. And then uh, we're going to want to turn on our DSP. Let's turn that off. All right, so we have an easy way to generate a sequence of notes. All right, let's go ahead and make our random a little bit more automated. We can create another new object called Metro, which acts as a metronome. Uh, it works in terms of milliseconds. So for example, if I say Metro 100, what will happen is when I activate this Metro, it will generate a bang every 100 milliseconds. All right, in order to make the Metro turn on, we're going to need to create a toggle object. So let's look at put shift command T for toggle. Let's also try out the shift command T shortcut. See, we make a new toggle. Let's connect our toggle to the Metro. Enter the, our evaluative mode here. And then let's go ahead and click the toggle box. Oh, and let's not forget to turn on our DSP. All right. All right, we have a lot of fun nonsense going on there. Okay, so this will generate a random sequence of notes uh, based around a chromatic scale uh, starting at middle C. But as of right now, this isn't super interesting. So what we need to do to make this a little bit more uh, exciting is to create what's called an envelope generator that will create an, a simple envelope for each one of our individual notes. All right, so an easy way to do this is uh, just with the V-line object, V-line tilde, okay? And what we wanna do is create two messages, one with a message that goes to one, and let's say we want that to happen over 50 milliseconds. Okay, and then another message, command two to create our message boxes. And we'll say we want it to go to zero over 50 milliseconds. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we'll connect one to the first inlet of V-line, and we'll connect zero to the first inlet of V-line. We're going to delete this volume over here and then we're going to connect the v-line there we're going to create another new object called delay and we're going to say delay 50 and what delay does is it delays a bang that is coming from one source and what we want to do is we want to delay a bang by 50 milliseconds so that the command to go to zero in terms of amplitude happens 50 milliseconds after we've gone to one so that the attack fully rises and then after 50 milliseconds we'll have an immediate decay of also 50 milliseconds. Okay, so in order to make this effective we're going to create uh, a couple, a new object here called trigger bang bang bang. T B B B. Our metronome will go into that our left inlet will go to our random. The middle inlet will go to our message 150. And our rightmost inlet will go to the delay. And then that will go to 050. And then now let's connect our oscillator to our signal multiplier. 
Oh, and let's turn on our volume. Here we go. Now we don't have any pops. And when I turn this off, again, no pops. We have a perfect increase of amplitude to one and then back to zero for each individual pitch happening in succession. Okay, let's try this one more time. We can create some changes here. For example, let's change our metronome now to 250. Let's see how this sounds. Very good. Okay, now let's say we wanted to have some variations and possible rhythms for our metronome. We can create a secondary random object. Let's say random 400. Okay. And then at the end of that random 400, we don't want to have a tempo start at zero. We actually don't want it to go much uh, slower than, or much faster than 100 milliseconds, rather. So let's create another addition object plus 100. So now we will have a range between 100 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds. Okay, let's create another new B here to add. We'll delete these patch cables here. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to have a bang go to this random object and we want to feed the output of this addition object back up to our metronome. And then we're going to send a bang to our first message going to V-line, and then a bang going to our delay. Okay, let's turn on our metronome. And now we have variation in our rhythmic output, as well as the randomization of our chromatic scale. All right, everybody, uh, that'll do it for today's lesson. Uh, after this, we're going to look at how to create a polyphony using uh, this uh, simple format and add even greater levels of complexity as we move on. Thank you, and I hope you all have a great day.